Okay, so having told you what a enriched category and what an enriched functor is, I want to now start to tell you in this video what an enriched natural transformation is. Well, I mean, well, there's a subtlety there in that there's various ways you can generalize the idea of natural transformations through the enriched setting. So what I want to do today is start to generalize the idea of a natural transformation. If I generalize the idea of the set of natural transformations, I'm going to get a different answer, a slightly better answer, in fact. And that's what I want to do um, in the next couple of videos. But today, I'll, I'll just go for the slightly more simple-minded version. So let me just remind you um, what natural transformation is in the usual setting. So we have category C and D and functors f and g from c to d, and a natural transformation from f to g consists of the data of for each um, object x in the category c, I want a morphism from f of x to g of x, so that whenever I've got a morphism f from x to y, then I get the naturality square, so this will give me a morphism from f of x to g of y in two different ways. I can, I can uh, make it in two different ways and they have to give me the same answer. So uh, that's what a natural transformation is, that data satisfying the, those conditions. Okay. So there's a couple of problems with this uh, in terms of generalizing it to the enriched setting. Mainly, well, it's the, the usual problem with en enriched categories, we don't have the idea of, of a morphism as such. We have a home object of morphisms from x to y, but we don't have individual morphisms. So more specifically, so theta, theta x, this thing here, is supposed to be an element of hom from fx to gx. In the usual categorical situation, this thing here is a set. So this is something in the category of sets, and a set has elements. Whereas in the enriched setting, this is actually going to be an object in our enriching category V. And typically, objects in categories, just pick a random category, an object in it is not going to have elements. So what do, does it mean to say theta x is an element in this HOM object? Okay. So there's a way around that, a sort of a na slightly naive way around it, but it would be useful, but we're going to see a better way of doing things later. Uh, so Suppose that V is a monoidal category, uh, so it has a tensor product and a unit object, and we can define canonical functor from V to the category of sets, and this is sometimes called the generalized elements, or just the elements or the global elements. There's various uh, names for this functor, so it takes an object V and what it does, it just takes this to the home set from the unit object into the element V. Uh, so let's just have a look at a couple of examples. If we take the category V to be the category of sets, then the unit object is just your favorite uh, one object, uh, one element set rather, and a morphism, if we have a set V, then morphisms from one object set into V is just the same as V. So, uh, so gamma in this case is just the identity. If we have the category of, let's say, complex vector spaces, the unit object is the complex numbers, and if we have a morphism from the linear map from the complex numbers to a vector space V, then you can just look at where the unit, the, the, the complex number one gets sent to, and that will give you a bijection with the original vector space, so this is just V, a vector space, goes to the underlying set um, of V, so that's not terribly interesting, well, uh, it's on some level, but it, in the case that we're interested in, our category of non-negative real numbers, uh, with the infinity added, so the unit object is zero, and remember that the tensor product is addition, so the unit object is zero, and a morphism from the unit object to number v, well, there's a morphism, so here v is, is the number, and that's going to go to, um, well, what is the home set? The home set from zero to anything is going to be empty unless zero is bigger than or equal to that thing. So what we get is it's just going to be a single, a single point if v equals zero, 
And if v is not equal to zero, then it's bigger than zero, so we don't get any morphisms from the unit object in, so it's going to be oops, uh, the empty set otherwise. Okay. So uh, that's slight, slightly more interesting. So um, this is a notion of generalized elements for an object in a monoidal category. Okay, and that just is just the the elements in a, in sets are just the usual element. Okay. So now we can understand what we mean by theta being inside Hom. We want it to be a generalized element of this V object. Okay. So what we want is that to be uh, a generalized element. Okay. So. Now we can say what we mean by a natural transformation. So if we have, in the, in the enriched setting, so if we have f and g from c to d, these are v functors, so we're enriching over some monoidal category v, and then we're going to define a natural transformation theta from f to g to be the following thing. So what we want is that for all x, this is strange, x, x in C, we are going to have a generalized element of the Holm set. So theta x is going to be something in gamma Holm from fx to dx. Uh, so in other words, theta is going to be something from 1 Um, okay, so we got around this bit. Now we have to rewrite this naturality square without mentioning morphisms anywhere. Um, and how do we do that? Well, the trick is that what we do, what we're doing here, is we're associating to each morphism from x to y a morphism from f of x to g of y. So each morphism here in, in C, we're associating a morphism in in D. So this is a this is actually a more, uh, this is something which sends hom from x to y to hom f of x g of y. So let me write this down. So I can write down this, this naturality square in a slightly different way. So if we start with hom, something hom from x to y, that's our f. If we start with our f in there, we want to end up with something from hom f of x to g of y. And the idea is there's two ways, using theta and f, there's two ways we can do it. So what we can do is we can go around the top, do this the right way around. So we can go hom xy to hom xy tensor with the unit object. So these are, are just going to be v objects. That's a nice morphism. And then what we can do is we can apply uh, G, so G will give us, remember, uh, morphism in V from HOM XY to HOM GX GY, and we tensor that with theta of X. So this will go to HOM GX GY tensor HOM uh, FX GX, and then we can just use composition in our C category D, so that gives us a, a way of composing something fx, gx, gx, gy into there. Or, so that is exactly what happened if we've gone around the top. So we're just composing theta x with gf uh, going around the top. So the way that way, and coming down here, we just go the other way around, 1 tends to hom xy. And then we apply theta y tensored with f. And just about out of time, so I'll just write this down. Hom uh, fy gy tensor hom fx fx fy. And again, we apply the composition. We can we've got the composition coming from the structure of v category and so the commutativity of this diagram is the same as the commutativity of the naturality square. So I'll say a little bit more about that 
next time uh, and slow down a bit.